Hello everyone and welcome to Games, Comics and Crafts. In this video I'll be looking at Thundercats issue 6. Okay, so with issue 6 we have... Interesting, we've got Calico, Calica, can't remember her name, uh, on the front cover, she's not in this book. Um, this is a standalone issue. Um, basically it does tie into the main storyline but it's mostly about Panthro. Um, I think this is a better depiction of Panthro than we've seen previously. He looks more like the cartoon one. Um, so, yeah, so basically he is trying to improve Third Earth because he has found there is a fuel cell there that's similar to uh, Thundrillium. Um, I think they're called Thundarium. Um, and he's kind of using this thing to kind of bring it up. He's kind of reflecting on his, his kind of past relationship with, Pan uh, with Lino. The idea that he was challenged by Chitara and that Calico betrayed um, Lino, and that uh, he's in he's in a coma, which is which I didn't think is that severe. But I knew he got hit by uh, Mumra, but anyway. Um, so yeah, this is a weird one because Vulturemen show up, loads of Vulturemen, and they've got beaks and stuff. It's they they're obviously Vulturemen. It's not difficult to figure out. Um, Panthro kind of tries to fight him off. And he managed to do so. Again, it looks much like much more like Panther. Uh and then we've got this one in a in a hood. And uh the one in the hood gets whacked in the face, dropped in the uh into the thunder tank, and then off they go, driving off, being pursued by the other um the other Vulcan. Um They kinda of make their way in, there's a they Closing the shield, bounces them off. There's a little bit there of like, oh my god, someone's managed to pull the control, and it seems to be that Snarf has managed to uh, make his way onto the um, Thunder Tank. I, I Again, I, why didn't I make Snarf talk? It's really annoying when he just stands there and sits there like, with a smug look on his face. It's it, why, why? I don't understand why they didn't make him talk. It makes no sense. Um, anyway, they're going through a uh, thing, they're, they're finding all these. Uh, He's trying to basically break these uh, vulture people off. I guess sometimes he's an advert. I don't know why these adverts. I much prefer it when they're adverts to, uh, their own comics are in the back of the book rather than scattered through because it just annoys me. Um, so all the vulture men are coming along. They do a big jump. They manage to smash into the smash into this thing. It manages to knock a load of vultures off this thing. Again, right, fine. They, they could have just flew through around it. It makes no sense. This is probably the bit, the only bit that actually kind of ties into the rest of the rest of the continuity, which is kind of makes more, which is kind of important. Basically, he says here, he kind of in, uh, talks to him about, okay, I've seen you people before, you're mutants. Uh, what's going on? He said, oh, this history, of, history of Third Earth and Thunder is a long one. Um, the Thunderians basically use this uh, planet as a penal colony and put all the mutants on there. Um, so that's why they're all there. Um, now. The worst thing about this is that kind of idea that it's a penal colony for mutants is kind of crappy in the fact that um, if that means that all of the other kind of characters and people we see in the in the cartoon series, uh, yeah, we're not going to see any Robert Burbills unless they're the most badass, nasty things in the world. We're not going to see the Amazons. We're not going to see um, uh, I've, I've got his name now, Snow Meow, and the and the Walrus guy. We're not going to see because this is a penal colony. So surely you wouldn't put a bung a load of uh, mutants on a world that's already inhabited. So are we now got a completely stark and barren third Earth with nothing in it apart from mutants and the fun cats as they are now? I think that's a big mistake. Uh, the the idea originally, obviously in the cartoon, was that they they landed there. And then they travelled around to discover what the other things were, and that's where they come across these other communities and people. Now it seems to be like, oh, this is us and the bad guys. That's it. And I don't think that's a good idea. So um, we shall see if anything else emerges. I, again, you know, I can understand them wanting to bring the, the mutants into it. Um, I don't understand why they, they're all in groups. I can't understand why we didn't have just have the, the, the three that we had in the cartoon series, and then obviously they can make alliances with the existing ones. 
But I really hope it's going to be more than just a constant to and fro in between the mutants and the thing. I want some stories that aren't involved in the mutants. It'd be perfect. But they didn't. we'll see. Anyway. Um, so Panther doesn't believe him and basically kind of lets him go. Off he trots. Thunder, Thunder Tank rolls off in, with its hopefully discovered Thunderium. And then there's a bit where he takes his head off and it's like, Hi, I'm Vulture Man. And you go, well, yeah, we kind of we kind of knew a Vulture Man anyway. You, you've just been chasing the Thunder Tank with bird people. It's not very difficult to figure out which one you are. So I don't I don't understand the hood. I, I some if someone could explain why the hood's there, I, I don't get it. It's like who's that mysterious winged person that that's uh, accompanied by other winged people without hoods that look like vultures? Could it be Vulture Man? The answer is yes. Um. So yes, yeah, so Vulture Man apparently is going to uh, wipe the uh, Thunderians off the of third earth, which is what everyone's trying to do. Um, obviously, there's going to be an alliance between these people. Next issue is a, a Wily Kit and Wily Cat issue. Um, I, I I used to like Wily Kit and Wily Cat. Sometimes they can be very annoying. Um, it depends. Let's see how they how they write them. Um, they don't seem to be stupid as lion though, though. So that's one benefit. So we'll see. But yeah, so all in all, again, not a terrible issue. Um, I still prefer the uh, the Chitara book at the moment um, compared to this one. But uh, you know, this this is okay. I just really, as I mentioned in my reviews of the earlier issues, I'm just really hoping they're not going to kind of you know darken the name of Jargo and darken the name of the Thundercats to make it edgy and gritty and all this kind of stuff. It's just like apparently Jargo brought them there for a reason. Now. Did he know? Is it because it's inhabitable? Did they know it's because it had the prison planet on? It, you know, or did he know that again the, the illusion in in the uh, in the first couple of issues is because Mumra was there and that he wanted to sell out the five Fundera to Mumra. That's why he brought them there. You know, can't we just have good guys be good guys and bad guys be bad guys rather than kind of this constant ah oh, they're all evil really and you know it's very it's very depressing. Anyway. So that's about it for this one. Um, so yeah, hopefully if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon on another video. Thanks very much. Bye bye.